fruit is nature's candy. It is also one of the most vital sources of vitamins, zinc, calcium and many more for the human body. But what if you could get into the fruits business to make more money? A significant percent of fruits that we eat here in Kenya are imported. This is because fruit trees require a lot of work and are quite delicate. The fact that they have to be watered, frequently sprayed with chemicals and still demand lots of attention makes them less attractive as a venture to go for if you are a small monanji. But not anymore. In this episode of Fresh and Fruity, we will learn how to do various seed propagation methods such as budding, grafting and macheting for different fruits. In Nyamasoe in Kisumu County, we meet a farmer and a trained horticulturalist by the name Charles Odira. Charles does seed propagation for many fruits such as apple mango, citrus, lemon, lime, oranges, among many others. Charles is also an innovator. He takes his community's challenges and turns them into viable business opportunities. In the olden days, we used to have uh, uh, fruit crops taking a very long time before farmers start harvesting. But now, because of the modern scientific methods, we have methods of propagation that will ensure that if you start propagating your plant, say from uh, year one, you can start harvesting in year two or year three. Grafting is the art of joining two pieces of planting tissue together in such a manner that they will unite and subsequently grow and develop as one plant. Despite being labor intensive, grafting is commonly undertaken as a means of vegetative propagation of woody plants for any or all of the following reasons. To impart disease resistance or hardness contributed by the rootstock to shorten the time taken to first production of fruits, in some cases by many many years, and to dwarf the plant, making both its height and shape more convenient for harvesting fruit. In Kenya, we have seen grafted avocados, mangoes, oranges and in nuts such as macadamia. Budding is the art of joining a bud from a plant, such as the citrus to a rootstock to create a better variety of a fruit plant. For grafting and budding, Charles needs a sharp knife, ethanol, wrapping paper, a plastic cover, tissue, rootstock and scion. The first step is choosing the scion. A scion is the upper portion of the graft where the branches, leaves and fruits of a tree will develop on. For the grafting, Charles will choose from the apple mango tree and for the budding, he will choose from the citrus manual tree. When you want to choose um, scion, there are factors that you should consider. Number one, you should consider the size of your rootstock. The scion should just be about the same size as the rootstock size. So that is what should be looked at first. The other that should be looked at is the particular variety that you want. Because if you pick uh, one variety, it is the same that is going to be your next plant. The other thing that should be looked at, the health of this plant. Good plants which have good health will give you better science, which will uh, uh, have a union very quickly. The final one that we should look at is how ready is it to germinate? How tender is it? If it is too tender, it is not very good for uh, our purposes. If it is too woody, it may also not be uh, very good for our purpose. So we look at uh, one which is just average. I pick on that one because when I look at the uh, size of the diameter, it is just like uh, almost the size of the uh, rootstocks that I have. In grafting, we need very clean cut and, and that can only be achievable if your knife is very sharp. You can see how clean the cut is because this is particularly very important for the part that is remaining on the plant because the plant is still growing 
And if the cut is not very clean, rotting will take place. After getting the scions from the mangoes, now we'll go to citrus, where we are going to take birdwood, which we are going to use in budding method of propagation. In citrus, we look for a branch that has a nice green color that is going to enable the buds to come out very easily. And uh, in this particular case, I have identified this one. One branch has so many buds. If I cut it at that particular point, then this will be able to uh, bud at least about 10 uh, 10, 10, 10 plants. We have a clean cut on both sides, the one that is remaining on the plant and the one that we are cutting away. We do the defoliation without damaging the stem and uh, this is because the part that remains will be able to drop automatically without the plant being injured. But if you cut, make a cut on the stem, then it is going to need a healing process, which is going to uh, certainly make sure that you are, uh, your bud does not stick to the rootstock. The second step is choosing a good rootstock. A rootstock is the lower portion of the graft, which develops into the root system of the grafted plant. It may be a seedling, a rooted cutting, a layered or micro-propagated plant. One of the things that Charles looks out for in the rootstock is its health. If the scion is healthy and the rootstock is poor in health, it will affect the grafted plant. Now we have our scions and uh, these are apple mango and we are going to do a type of grafting which is called wedge grafting. Just like the name implies, we are going to make a wedge on the scion. And this should be a very clean cut also, because if the cut is not clean, then the union may not form as you'd have wanted to. So just a clean cut, very clean. The longer the cut, the better, so that you have several points of union. Then that is ready. When grafting the apple mango, Charles will take this sanitized knife in ethanol and make a cut on the rootstock. Just like the cut of the scion, the rootstock's cut has to be clean cut and precise in the middle. This is where the scion will call home for its lifetime. We bring the scion and insert so that it looks like it was there before. In case they don't exactly uh, have the same diameter, you make sure that at least one of the side flashes well, because that is when the uh, phloem and the xylem are going to attach to each other. So that when you look at it, it looks like it is just one plant. Then you pick Thai polythene, and then you tighten so that uh, the union is tight. It should be quite tight so that uh, the union can take place. People will need to fit tight around where the grafting is going to take place, but not suffocate the area where a shoot will sprout from. It is important to cover it so that we can create some microclimate for to the scion and uh, the rootstock at that particular uh, point. And the other bit is that so the scion cannot lose moisture to the environment. This is ready and uh, it will be watered. When the leaves uh, are crowded in the polythene here, then it is time to remove the polythene covering. And then the plant can be left tended for, cared for, the usual watering and uh, after one month then it will be ready for sale to the farmers. For budding the citrus fruits, he will cut one bud from the several buds on this branch. 
He will then take the bud and fit it into this rootstock after making a letter T. We come to the bud and we choose on one, make a T. Then we want to remove the bud with just some bit of wood behind. There we are. The bud has been removed and we make sure we remove the wood that is still remaining there. On the rootstock, we are going to make what is called a tea cut. Then we make sure that we open either side. This is the bud and we want to insert it into the tea so that it looks like it was there before. And you can see the bud has already been inserted. Then we take our tie string and then make sure that it has a pressure on it so that we don't have any air space. But we make sure that we don't tie the actual bud because it will need to germinate. So tight that uh, water cannot gain entry because if water gains entry then there will be some rotting and uh, once it is tied well then your budding has taken place and this can now be put in a shed and over a period of uh, roughly one month we shall have a bud growing at this particular point just like a bird could grow at this point, a bird will grow at this particular point. But once you see the bird starting to grow, then we will break the shoot at this point so that all the food that is manufactured comes to feed the growing bird. And that is the process we just wait for it to germinate. In mangoes or avocado, the method preferred is grafting because that is the one that has higher success rate. And if you do budding for mangoes or avocado, some of them may survive, but the success rate is very, very low. So I prefer you go with the one that is proven to be having the highest success rate. After care of the budded and grafted plants is very important.